this animal has a trait that makes it nearly immortal. Time to get hands on with a zombie toad. There it is. All right, here we are again in the Sonoran Desert at night, but this time it's different. We partnered up with PetSmart, who's sponsoring this video, to find a creature that has eluded us all these years. And get this, this animal has a trait that makes it nearly immortal. Oh man, I'm excited. All right, headlamps on, let's get searching. So in order to find this extremely elusive animal, which only comes out once a year, we've got to locate some water, which is not exactly the easiest thing to do here in the desert. So we're gonna have to hike probably a couple miles, but the good news is while we're hiking, this is monsoon season. There's a good chance we're gonna find some other things crawling around out here. And of course, if we see stuff, we're gonna stop and take a look. I mean, this is Bray Wilderness after all. Oh, I think I see something right there. Got a snake right here, look at that. That's a nice one too. Okay, I'm gonna get out the snake hook. We've gotta be super careful. This is a venomous snake. It's a species of rattlesnake, but it is a very specialized version. Not only do they have a very distinct feature, if you look at the front of that snake's head, you see those horns? It's actually a specialized scale. The raised scales over their eyes are likely an evolutionary adaptation that may help the snake shade its eyes from the sun or possibly prevent sand from drifting over them as they lay buried underneath the sand to ambush prey. But perhaps the most interesting trait, let's see if we can get it to do this, is how they move. There we go, see that move? Look at that. You see that sideways locomotion? That is so cool. Well, I think we can all see how this little snake got its infamous name, the Sidewinder. It's not the creature we're after, but it's certainly a good start to the night. All right, let's grab our stuff and keep going. All right, so here we go. This is a very nice wash. And for those of you who have seen our adventures out in the Sonoran Desert previous to this video, you'll remember that this is like the super highway for creatures at night. So what I wanna do right now is I actually wanna get a different tool. This, of course, would be a black light. And this is the perfect instrument to find those stingy arachnids, the scorpions out here in the desert. And I think if we search for probably just a few minutes, we'll come across one. Oh, got one right there. You see it? Oh yeah, that's a desert hairy. Oh, it's a big one too. Look at that. Oh, check that out. Just gotta commit. Ah, oh yeah. Oh, they do have a pretty decent pinch, I will say. Check that out. Desert hairy scorpion, the largest scorpion out here in the Sonoran Desert. But what's interesting is, although it is the largest, it has probably the weakest venom. So if you're stung by a desert hairy scorpion, for most people, it's nothing more than a bee sting. However, that being said, some people are allergic, so you definitely do not want to be stung by any scorpion if you can help it. Now, I did take a couple of good pinches. Scorpion of this size will give you a pretty solid pinch, so you definitely don't want to pick one up if you see it out here in the desert. I'm only doing it so I can get it close to the cameras and you guys can see just how illuminated they become under a black light. Is that showing up on camera? Yeah, that looks cool. Awesome, okay, well, Let's fire up the lights, let this scorpion go, and keep heading toward the water. I think you can tell by all these bugs, we're starting to get close. Okay, this is perfect. There was once water here, which means, oh yeah. We have found the water, folks. 20 yards ahead lives the creature that we've been searching for. Let's go. Oh, I think I got one. Oh yeah. Okay, I'm gonna leave my pack here and I'm heading in. Time to get hands on with a zombie toad. Haha! 
Got him. Nice pet. Oh yeah, that is perfect. That's definitely the toad we've been after. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The Spade Foot Toad, AKA the Zombie Toad. This creature actually lives underground. They use this specialized appendage. See that little black speck? That is actually why it gets the name Spade Foot, because that little black speck is actually very rigid. It's made out of keratin, the same material as my fingernail. And it uses this spade to dig itself back into the soil for another year of hibernation. Now, when it does hibernate, it almost completely dehydrates itself and slows down all of its life processes, remaining in a state of limbo for months and months and months. While hiding underground in suspended animation, the spadefoot toad is a solitary creature. But when the rainfall finally returns during the monsoon season, the toad will rehydrate itself and emerge from the ground to breed and lay eggs in shallow pools of water. This is the primary reason they return to life. But they will return to the ground shortly thereafter for another year as a nearly lifeless organism. Now, if you take a closer look, you'll see there's another few interesting traits about this species of toad. It lacks the traditional paratoid glands right behind the eyes that you'll see on the Colorado River toad. Also, it has vertical pupils. I don't know if you can get a tight shot in there at the eye, almost like a cat's eye. And you can see the skin, not quite as bumpy. Got him. <laughs> Having to play catch tonight with this toad. You can see the skin is not quite as bumpy as your ordinary toad. And in fact, I would say the spadefoot toad resembles more of a frog than a species of toad. But I think this is so cool to finally get to feature this nearly immortal creature that can dig down into the desert sands and live its whole year without water, only to resurrect itself when the rains return. Wow. Now, I know a lot of you at home are probably looking at this toad thinking to yourself, that toad's pretty cute. If I was ever in the Sonoran Desert, and I found a toad like that, I bet it would make a pretty good pet. Well, the truth is, these animals live a very specialized life and therefore need a very specialized habitat and do not make good pets. But there are definitely some reptiles and amphibians that do. Look at that, and the sun's out. And PetSmart has everything you need to care for your brand new family member. Hi, welcome to PetSmart. PetSmart understands how much everyone at home loves their pets and the fact that they would do anything for them. Getting a new pet can be overwhelming. As the one-stop destination for new pet essentials, PetSmart offers information, a product assortment not found anywhere else, and expert service solutions, so you can focus on the excitement of getting your new family member and not the stress. And one of the best options for a first time pet owner in the reptile space is none other than the bearded dragon. Look at this little fella. And this is the perfect setup for a long-term home for this reptile. While this little juvenile may appear too small for a terrarium this size, it's actually perfect because at full grown adult size, a bearded dragon can grow up to 24 inches in length. So this terrarium will serve this lizard for its entire lifespan. Now, one of the most important things when caring for your brand new bearded dragon is that you have a warm side and a cool side in the habitat. The best way to ensure that's possible is to have a hydrometer thermometer and proper UV lighting, all of which is included in this kit. So like we said before, wildlife don't really make good pets, but if you wanna own a reptile like a bearded dragon, this is a great choice. I'm Mark Vins, be brave, stay bearded. We'll see you next time. All right, off you go. Thank you to PetSmart for sponsoring this special adventure. And make sure to visit PetSmart or PetSmart.com today for all of your new reptile care needs.